my orange pill is inseparable from my red pill because I only saw the necessity, the solutions of Bitcoin uh, from the red pill. So they're inseparable for me. And a lot of people that are deeply red pilled and get what's going on, I feel like they're more primed um, to join Bitcoin because, well, if you know the problem, you're already halfway there more than everybody else that doesn't even understand that anything is wrong yet. Um, so I'm always trying to orange pill the red pilled people because that, that was my route. Of course, that's not everybody. A lot of people have had Bitcoin for a long time, but um, the, the financial crisis of 2008, a solution was born out of that. So I don't know why it is if people understand what happened in 2008, why they don't see the brilliance of Bitcoin. And you know, that's sort of my quest is just to collect that audience of uh, angry Americans who get what's going on and then present them this alternative. Because we can opt out of the system. It doesn't have to be some violent revolt. We can just defund it. We can just get out of it. What does that future look like to you? Do you think Bitcoin will be used as a global reserve currency? Do you think currencies will collapse um, to just a few and Bitcoin will be used as, as a store of value or both? What do you see the, the you know 10-year time horizon? Uh, they're going to bankrupt the wealthy nations. That's a part of how they're going to bring about the um, the central bank digital currency, the spy coin, so that because everything is about growing the power of the state to the state. So anything they have to do to necessitate, oh, sorry, we broke it. Here's a whole new system. Um, but people haven't really thought about what that means. Is that really going to mean for for savers like you're going to exchange a dollar for a a unit of you know what, what a Fed coin or whatever like. How is that going to go? What does that mean, especially it to an administration where they happily throw around terms like, you know, equitous and what does that mean? And and uh, the potential for reparations of things you didn't do and just all kinds of uh, questions that arise. So um, but I think that Bitcoin, if we can now, while we have lots of money flowing, if we can convince people to pull out um, that they might have a fighting chance at uh, uh, you know, the likelihood, it's a possibility that they're going to redistribute your wealth. So perhaps maybe you should do something about that while there's time to do something about it. Uh, but people always want to wait till it's too late because they don't want to be alarmist. They don't want to look funny to the friends. They don't want to rock the boat, you know, and you're just going to let things happen to you that could be completely detrimental to your generational wealth. I think that's absurd. I'm not even in a position for that to impact me. And I think it's absurd to not do anything. Like if you see the storm coming, like what's the whole point of having, you know, Doppler radar if we don't do something about the fact that rain is coming? I don't know if in my lifetime I'm necessarily thinking it'll do the global reserve current. It I don't, there's so many, there's so many variables that are uh, unpredictable as far as like, if we wake people up enough, can we at least slow down and stall this agenda 2030 and that would be that would be something we should be trying to do <laughs> that'd be good uh so as as far as what bitcoin is i think that what needs to happen is there needs to be a lot of people on the network so that we can use it as an alternative to the spy coins because i don't want anything to do with these spy coins so i need it as a functioning um monetary network is what i need Big government just reminds me of being a child forever, and I uh, would never go back to childhood in a thousand years. I would never take that deal again, you know, unless reincarnation is real and you don't get a choice anyway. So, uh, but that, but I don't want a daddy government because I've outgrown all of that. So, would you consider yourself a libertarian? I certainly. I don't understand why all Americans base mode of operation isn't libertarian. So I suppose, yes, because it, <laughs> there's a continuity of, of being American. And like, if anybody, if anybody wants to live according to the founding documents, I, I think that makes them pretty libertarian. And there are, and not that I am a constitution worshiper because I've had to think about a lot of these things. Um, I'm not somebody uh, that thinks the constitution is the only like hope we have because that would, would be to say that like what's going on in Australia or Canada because they don't have our same founding documents that they somehow deserve this or that you know they should have thought of that at the founding, you know, like no, no, tyranny is always wrong no matter what your founding documents say. 
Um, so I don't try to over talk our founding documents that much, but I think that all Americans base mode of, of conduct, if you, if you have any continuity of thought, understanding the founding documents, of course, you'd be libertarian. Cause then you can have your personal opinions from there. And of course that doesn't mean you're always going to vote libertarian. Um, but, but yeah, I'm definitely libertarian. Are you an anarchist? Uh, well, the more that the system reveals itself to be irrecoverable, I, I suppose that is a um, uh, consideration. Although labels to me like, okay, um, all my paradigms have shifted so greatly and words mean so, I've learned so much about what words and labels mean to other people and the constant shifting state of how you get there. Like there's all this, there's all this, you know, guts of people's thinking. And if you don't, if you don't actually know what an anarchist thinks in, especially in the dynamic way of how fast time is moving now, it's really hard for to say that like, oh, I'm an anarchist because nobody knows what that means. It's like, does that mean you're Antifa? Well, I, obviously not. You know, that that's not the kind of anarchism that I, I am. But I can I had on Twitter like two days ago, yesterday and two, and two days ago, um, some exchanges that were just like academic with the actual um, the Socialist Party in the UK like the actual verified like socialists, which was, which was fascinating to me. And of course, you know, it's just, it was just, you know, quoting Marx basically is all they did. But, um, you know, the, the, a lot of, a lot of different types of uh, political philosophies in a vacuum have a base start that everybody is born free and self-sovereign. And then of course the, the, you know, the fuckery of, sorry, the fuckery of the world, like it gets in society and it breaks, it breaks everything down in a way where it's, it just deteriorates into all power consolidates. So all it's trying to do is get one over on its people all the time. And if nations aren't at war with each other, they're at war with their people. Because that's what that's what a military industrial complex does is it just war rages. And now it's war raging on people. So now I feel real bad for all the wars that like we participated in. All, you know, there's so yeah, so the, I have a lot of like anarcho ideas, but it's only it's only born out of a state of being in utter shock about the fact that organized society is failing so much, you know? Republicans are great because they think that they're, they can still like repair this shit. And I'm like, that's definitely not how I feel about these institutions. <laughs> Cause they're so, they're so, if it's so broken and so corrupt and this is done, the last two years have done nothing but like reveal everything, the, the irreparability of all of this. So what do we do about that? It's hard because I don't want to seem unhinged, but what do we do about the fact that this isn't a fixable situation? That's why Bitcoin is so great, because then it, it breaks down these national barriers. Um, and we can think about where to go and where to build with uh, governments that are pro Bitcoin, because at least we have a shared foundation of fair money to know at least this government doesn't have the power to do this, this or that. Because if you fix the money, you can fix all kinds of your your relationship with the government is fixed if they don't have a money printer in a lot of ways.